Luke here with CatsandCarp.com and I'm somewhere in southwestern Texas fishing for catfish and carp and I am using the best grocery store baits to get the job done. And I'm going to walk you through how I'm doing it and all the tips and tricks along the way. Okay guys, I'm here in Texas and the nearest bait shop is miles away. So we are gonna use what we can find at our local grocery store. Of course, there are a couple classics. Shrimp. And frankly, this looks really good too. So we're gonna use some of it for bait and I'm gonna eat some of it. Slim Jims and other sort of jerky sticks also work as pretty decent bait actually. All right, classic chicken livers. It's only $1.60, super cheap. Classic hot dogs. Over in the UK, Spam is a super popular carp and catfish bait. Sweet corn is great for trout, carp, and even catfish. This stuff is awesome. Dehydrated breadcrumbs or panko is also a great carp bait and catfish bait. There you go, strawberry jello. Get some vanilla extract, make sure it's the type with alcohol in it. Get some oatmeal. Couple packets of cherry Kool-Aid. Well, good morning, and it's our first day here in Texas, and to celebrate, we are drinking watermelon juice and Tres Leches cereal. Woohoo! Well, we've got some big plans here in Texas. We're just gonna kinda of take it easy today and then tomorrow we're heading out to Uvalde, Texas where we're renting a tank and a flamethrower and machine guns and all lots of other things you can only rent in Texas. But today's just kinda of take it easy today and there's a little river behind the house and we are gonna go fishing, so. We're gonna have all sorts of fun. We're gonna make some bait here. Oh! There we go, we let this set up for about five, 10 minutes. And this will make an excellent bait for catfish and carp. Hot dogs with cherry Kool-Aid. Got the Spam. All right, we got some of the strawberry Jello. We're gonna put it in there. All right, now we got strawberry Spam. Plain Spam works just fine as well. All right, we got some instant oatmeal. We got the vanilla extract. A Little bit of corn. Mix it all up, it'll be really soggy, then let it sit for about 15 minutes. If you don't have vanilla, you can use the jello powder or Kool-Aid powder, and that works really great too. And if you don't have instant oatmeal, you can also use instant grits. I've also used instant mashed potatoes, rice, lots of things work. Honestly, I don't think the catfish or carp care about the vanilla flavor. I think it's the alcohol they like. Vanilla extract is made by taking a thing of vodka and just soaking a vanilla bean in it. So most of it's alcohol. So if you don't have vanilla extract, you can use vodka or beer or other liquors, you know. Catfish are boozers. They dig it. Those are my travel rods. Alrighty. All right guys, you ready to go fishing? This river, like a lot of desert rivers in the Southwest, is kind of a tiny little thing, except when it rains, then it gets massive. And you can see here, it's got all these washed rocks up here from where the river floods. The water's really shallow and clear, so the fish are gonna spook very easily. So we'll make this challenging with kids. I love this travel set. I've got three 10 foot rods, a landing net, and three rod holders, and all my tackle in this bag. Weighs less than 20 pounds too. Yeah. 
start off, I'm going to use some of this Spam and Kool-Aid. Okay, I'm going to take a cube of it. I'm going to stab it with this baiting needle. I'm going to put it on the hook. There we go. I have no doubts that there's catfish and carp in this river. The question in my mind is whether they're going to be active in the daytime. With clear shallow water like this, they get really nervous exploring in the daytime because you know they can get eaten by hawks and other land-based predators. They tend to be a lot braver at night. So I've got a deep spot with a lot of hiding holes, little crevices and rocks. I'm going to chuck it there and see what happens. If we don't get any action, I bet we will closer to sunset. What'd you catch, Tom? Frog? So, yeah, let me see. Oh, look at that guy. He's so little. Oh, he jumped right there in the water. Oh, that'd be good bait. Just to add a little temptation, I'm going to throw some of this oatmeal and corn out there to kind of chum the spot up a little bit. That right there, son, is looks like a carp. See, look at the tail. Look at the tip of the back tail. I see, hop down. There's a whole bunch of them right there. I can see them right there. Looks like we're scaring them, though. They can see us. Okay, put my net together here. There we go. Whoop. There we go. Do that, we just got a big hit. Taking a little ball of this Ponco Jello pack bait, and I'm putting my hook with the fake corn on it. Jamming that in there, we're gonna cast that out. Let's see if I can't get some of these carp I see swimming around. You know, the thing with throwing chum is, it, it doesn't really attract the fish any more than your bait would. The thing about chum is it helps you catch more fish because it helps you get that whole school in there feeding aggressively. And then when you catch one or two of them, they're less bothered by it because there's food around. Hey, can I net it? Yeah, go get the net, yeah. You scoop them up in the net. Okay. Good job. A little tiny, pretty common carp. Okay, you got him? Okay. okay. Put him gently down in the water, okay? Okay. There you go. There. There he goes. He's off. Good job. When I hooked that carp, I could see three or four other carp following him everywhere he went. The carp here like to run in schools, and you want to catch as many of the fish out of the school as you can. And the key is to keep chumming them. So you catch one, throw out some free chum. When they eat up the chum, throw out a little bit more. And then more and more fish will get feeding more and more confidently. And then you'll just be able to catch lots of them. I can see them right there. They're already all over my bait. And they're getting used to it too. When, the, when they hear the splash of me throwing the bait in, they're not running away anymore. A hot dog soaked in Kool-Aid here. And we're gonna try this out. Oh, look at that. Can I reel it? Oh, he hit it so fast. You want to reel him in, Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here. Ah, oh, stay, stop. Keep him in the water. Keep him in the water. Nice little channel catfish for a tiny little creek. Here. This spot where I caught the catfish is this deep little hole with lots of little rocks and ledges. I'm going to throw some hot dog in there and see what happens. All oh, the bluegill are going bonkers for it. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. <laughs> One of the most popular and well-known catfish baits is chicken livers. They're you know, less than $2 for a whole tub of them. They work great. The one problem with them is they're super soft and they come off the hook really easy. To solve that problem, you can use what's called an egg loop knot. Egg loop knot is basically a way of snelling a hook so that a little retractable loop, a reusable loop, uh, is on the shank of the hook. And you can use this to pin the bait to the shank of the hook so it doesn't come off as easily. It's a very effective rig 
when you're using chicken livers. And if you want to know how to tie it, it's super easy. And I'll put a link in the video description to a video I did on how to tie the egg loop knot. All right, let's go upstream and explore a little bit. Maybe we'll find a better fishing spot. Small fish? Real? You caught a frog? Uh -huh. Let me see him. Oh, look at that little guy. He's so cute. No, oh, where'd he go? There. All right. Next, we're going to try shrimp. Mm. Oh. Yeah, catfish love shrimp. He's almost lost his spots. Channel catfish just don't get very big in here, probably. Well guys, I have no clue what the name of this river is, but it has just been an absolute hoot catching these little catfish and carp. It's just the right amount of challenging and rewarding. I bet a lot of you guys have similar little creeks and rivers near your house, and this stuff will work there too. You know, I've been to Japan and Europe and all over North America, and I go to grocery stores, I pick up something similar to what I did today, and it usually works. It's These are pretty solid solid technique all right we got our vanilla oatmeal and corn here you can see a channel catfish right there he smelled that vanilla oatmeal and he's got his tail up in the air his nose in the ground and he's picking up all the little bits of oatmeal and corn it's like watching a pig grub around oh there's another one right there he's he's liking what he's smelling too he's got his nose in the dirt I hit that prematurely. Ah, uh, I got too excited. Should have just. Those channel catfish are boozers. They like that alcohol in the vanilla extract. Definitely, they definitely do. Okay, I felt a little stupid not knowing the name of the river, and so I looked it up. It's the Medina River. Cool. Never heard of it, but it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of water. Should we go find some fish? Now we stirred him up pretty good in that hole. Let's go try another one. I think mama caught a fish. Of course she did. She's a fishing queen. Oh, did mama catch a catfish? I caught a catfish and Jacob got stung by a bee. Oh. Exciting times. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at that, mom. Nice channel catfish. You get stung by a bee? Oh, is that naughty bee? Oh, look, can I see it? No. I have a, you know what? You don't want me to touch it, do you? Yeah. You know, if you put it in the cold water, it feels better sometimes. Yeah. Well, Nathan just got stung by a bee too, so I think it's time to call it for the day. But I think it was pretty successful. We caught uh, fish on almost every bait except for the jerky stick and the chicken liver. But hopefully you enjoyed this video more than the children enjoyed being stung by bees. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to click subscribe and turn on that notification so you can know when we post our next video. And also make sure not to be stung by bees.